Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first keynote of the ACA 14th Annual Cashew Conference. To officially start your day in this very session, I'd like to welcome the Managing Director of the African Cashew Alliance, Enes Minta. Enes, if you can hear me, please welcome the audience. Thank you. Enes, can you hear me? Hello. Enes, we can't hear you. Are you online? Can you hear me? Yeah, hello. Uh, good, good day to everyone and welcome to this session. Uh, even as we wait for me to get a visual in terms of my video, I think it is still good to continue. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all of you for participating in the 14th Annual Cashew Conference uh, of the African Cashew Alliance. Uh, we had to hold it as an I conference because of all the situation regarding the coronavirus. Uh, we are hoping that next year we will be able to uh, hold it uh, in a physical location where everybody can be in, and we are still thinking of Accra, uh, Ghana. So we are hoping to welcome all of you to Ghana in September next year, 2021, so that we can physically uh, have our conference and to be. Uh, we, I will also like to thank you all for participating in this I forum and making it a success. And also, you know, the uh, follow-up forums that were held in the month of September. Following the conference and the uh, forums that were held on the sidelines in the month, we realized that there were a number of demands coming to us, asking us to go deep into certain topics again and uh, for people to get more knowledge on some of the issues that were discussed. One of the topics where people were asking for a deep dive is a topic on caching processing technology and its incubation. So today we have the pleasure of uh, having as a speaker, uh, the maintenance guru himself, uh, Bala Kishan, uh, who will be taking us through all the things regarding you know, the maintenance of equipment in the factory floor. And uh, he will be moderated by our experienced processing uh, experts, uh, none other than uh, Shakti Pal himself. So on, uh, on this note, I, I just don't want to take too much of your time. Uh, I will hand over back to uh, Blessing and to say that uh, I wish you a fruitful deliberation and uh, please enjoy the session and uh, come up with your questions and give us feedback on what we need to do more as we continue now with the journey on the I forums. Thank you once again and uh, enjoy. Thank you very much, Ernest. Um, to our audience, please note that this session. After selecting a preferred language and you can still hear the main language, please mute the original language. I repeat, this session has been held in English and French. Kindly select a preferred language using the interpretation feature below. Do you have any question or, or need for clarification? Kindly put it using the Q&A chat. And then all chat are going to the chat feature. Um, without wasting much time, would like to invite the moderator for this session, who is no other but Shakti Pal. Shakti Pal is a cashew industry expert with over 20 years of experience in the production and processing of cashews across Africa. He was instrumental supporting African processing since its inception by introducing new technologies, assisting in harvest and post-harvest handling and maximizing processing through efficient factory layouts, training and quality control. Mr. Shaktipal's deep knowledge of the sector has contributed to the revitalization of struggling local processing industry in multiple countries. At present, he is a manage, he's managing Karosna's original development program, 
a new instrument to support processing at origin with new dynamics. Joining Shakti today is no other but the maintenance guru who we choose to call maintenance guru Balakrishna. Shakti, if you can hear me, please, you may proceed with the session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Blessing. Uh, good morning to all participants. Good morning, sir. Good morning. You're welcome and hope you are yeah. safe, doing well at your places and dealing with well with this COVID crisis. Yes, sir. It's fine. First of all, Everything is fine. Uh, yeah. First of all, I would like to thank to African Cash Alliance to organize this important session once again. Uh, technology incubation and maintenance such technical sessions need adequate time, especially when we want to discuss how we do this. We all know it is important, but how to do this really need time, especially when uh, these technologies are quite new to Africa and uh, processing is an emerging industry in Africa. Unfortunately, in first session, we didn't have enough time and our speaker have to rush to present his case, uh, which uh, everyone claims for that. I would like to say thanks to participants for their valuable feedback uh, demanding this session again with better al allocation of time. So here we are once again. We are going to spend almost next two hours to know about this in detail, discuss different perspectives and having Q&A session. So this time we, des we designed this more, or, more as a discussion rather than just a presentation. We are going to use the same presentation as we did in the last time, but having frequent intervals uh, after each important part of it. So that we can ask those some common questions. Uh, we collected these, these questions in previous sessions and uh, we got through these questions also through various emails uh, received after uh, first session. We will keep uh, 30 minutes in end uh, for participants questions. So please write your questions in Q&A window or raise hand during Q&A allocated time. So when we talk maintenance and technology incubation in cash processing, we know there is no alternative to mechanization if we really want to get success uh, in cash processing anywhere. I'm not talking about just in Africa. We know uh, so early mechanization, if we talk about Africa, uh, early mechanization was a hit and trial to improve performance. So we used to buy equipment, uh, try it and see if we are lucky. Most of the time we were not. We bought another machine and keep trying. So frequent, I'm talking about this 2010 to 2015. So frequent feedback from such trials helped developers to come up with educate technology. And today we have many proven technologies in place, uh, which are supporting this um, exponential growth in African processing. But are we all lucky with this mechanization? We will solve our problem. That still remains a big question. Are we all able to get desired results with these technologies, like uh, getting minimum of seventy percent of holes? or 85% of whites, or no back cuts? Answer is, rarely we get that. Yes. Are we able to utilize the full potential of technologies, like processing those volumes as declared per, de per, per declared capacity? Answer is not quite often. No, we, 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 we don't utilize this up to that optimal capacity. Or how often we stop production due to equipment breakdown? An answer is quite often. Yes, we have quite frequent breakdowns and we have to stop uh, the production. Or are we not often changing equipment? This is not working. This part of equipment is not working and the solution is to buy another one. That's a very usual practice. One technology problem and the solution is to buy another technology. And then this new technology become a problem. So we keep continuing this, having a problem and then buy a new problem. No, we can't. Yes, it is true. 
then how we address this issue? So right ways to improve on our, to address this is to improve on our understanding of technologies and this incubation requirement. And that's the most important part. We have to understand how to incubate technologies. That's the only way to use technologies to improve our processing competitiveness. Major part of the technologies incubation program is maintenance. So when we talk about maintenance is almost 80 or 85% of any technology incubation program. So it's a big word. Quite often we hear this word, but do, do we understand this the way we should? Not really, we don't understand the way we should understand this word maintenance because we usually get confused with the repair work and keep tracking breakdowns and cure falls that keep us busy. We are always behind those breakdowns. While the true meaning of maintenance is to get rid of breakdowns. A complete leaf breakdown free processing with desired production benchmarking is the outcome of an effective maintenance program. And once we get the meaning right and plan accordingly, I'm sure we solve all of our issues with technologies and we will be the most competitive processor on earth. Now, why we are not doing this, if it is that simple? And the very simple answer is know-how. So to get this right, we are here once again with Mr. Balakrishnan Viramala. He's a champion on the technology incubation. With his dedicated work, he's not only actually reduced equipment breakdown to its entirety, but also helped to achieve desired results out of adopted technologies. He's going to share some maintenance mantras with which we can use in our maintenance programs to improve on our technology performance. I believe if an equipment work for first month or first two months or first three months after installation and commissioning, we can always, and, and giving the good results. That means we can always get those results even after three years or four years, five years. And that's possible only when, if we are having a good maintenance program in place. And I want to say a special thanks to Bala, especially in this time uh, to spare the time for this session because right now he's in India and his hometown Andhra Pradesh is having big floods. And since last week, his home is under floods without electricity. Um, Bala, we wish you all courage and pray for a quick relief of this unwanted problem. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, so <laughs> now the stage is yours and uh, uh, we will be, uh, let me put your presentation first and then yes, sir. I, will, I will take a small gaps after, after uh, some places to ask you some common questions before we arrive awesome. at the end. Uh, okay, so. Yeah. Can you see uh, the presentation? Yeah, I can see, sir. I can see. Okay. It's on slide three. It's fine. Just a minute. So, like, let me see. Yeah. So, I think stage is yours. Yes, sir. Uh, Good morning, sir. I think it's afternoon. <laughs> In Africa, it's morning. Yes, sir. Now, uh, prerequisites of maintenance. Now we can go one by one. As per uh, your suggestions, we can go with uh, only on maintenance only. So for that, we have to keep a maintenance team and training, management commitments, availability of spares, maintenance schedules and plans follow up on update and performance of production. Now coming to maintenance team and training, this is the first job we have to do whenever we start a factory or whenever we are going to start a machinery or whenever we buy a machine. And the team has to be do all the things with the machine. Even some breakdowns will come. Uh, there is some normal breakdowns are there. There is some irregular. These all things they have to analyze and they, can, they, are, they should be able to do then only the team will be perfect and that team we have to make by local availabilities and training of them. These uh, training of them means whenever a new machinery comes, whenever some missionaries arrives, we have to train them. We have to uh, continuously keep on them. Uh, what, what is happening? What is the down? What is the, what is the problems with the machine and all? Now, 
team and training is most important for all the machines even not even for uh, even even I, i have worked in many industries so even for cash or anything this is most important because though they are the only persons who can change anything and next coming to uh, management commitment these we have to communicate to the management what is happening what are the issues what are the things what are the things we are going to do and what is the problems and what is the consumption what is down times these things we have to be communicate with the management and what is their plan and for example like uh, for example if you are running a machine which is not good means we are facing many issues for that we have to give proper explanation then we can uh, we can try to get the new machinery or uh, we can, we have to compare all the uh, performances and everything then we have to understand the uh, management commitments now availability of spares this is the uh, problem especially in africa what i faced seriously so uh, some spares are available in africa mostly mostly all mechanized parts are available let's come to electrical on electronics some some devices this is uh, not possible to get from here so for that we have to uh, we have to be very clear that when we are buying machines we have to be very clear that what are the spares required for those machines for example let's take color sorters these color sorters let we can use uh, what what is the major problem is the lights led lights what i faced mostly in color sorters and like that nanopics or so, so many machine these spares some spares are available to some spares will not available for that we have to import so for example for sp- small spares we have to stop machines for one week because even in air cargo also it will take now it is taking around one week so these are the issues we have to be always focused on spare parts availability and local availability means it is depends on us for example local manufacturers local fabricators can do some 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 things if we give samples they will make and give that is not an issue but we have to develop them in locally also then only we, our life will be easy and machine performance will be fine because all the time we cannot uh, depends on importing machinery or air lifting on cargo so this is not possible all the time so for that we have to maintain a uh, vendors that who can make the space for us that is one thing and uh, <clears throat> maintenance uh, schedule and plans this is the <clears throat> this is key point for all the maintenance for example there is two types of uh, breakdowns one is uh, the two types of maintenance one is preventive and regular breakdowns regular breakdowns will occur when you fail in preventive maintenance for example if you schedule for each section one day for monday to friday saturday if you put one section one day if you do that perfectly we don't need to face any breakdowns so breakdowns is just like a surprise because we cannot expect if we do preventive maintenance perfectly then we can fight with the uh, breakdown means it will not happen if it is happen also the in the schedule time we can arrest the breakdown that is uh, most important even schedules and plans so follow up on output performance for example let's coming let's coming to shelling the whole per uh, whole percentage we have to always communicate with the uh, the team who is doing the production then only we can able to do the performance and if we can do anything if you know the what is the exact reasons and what is the problems so follow up on output performance we have to monitor each and every hour for example if uh, let me share you my experience in cashew so for example if you take one shelling machine we have we are we, i used to do every one hour one machine sample then only we we can control uncut how much uncut percentage is there how much backcut is coming what is the percentage of holes and what are the what are the things we need to adjust so these all the things depends on the output performance we have to continuously follow up with that so uh, these are the prerequisitions of maintenance mostly what the summary of the uh, maintenance these are the mostly uh, important thing that to get very happy life or uh, to sustain in cash flow industry these things are most uh, important yes sir okay that's that's great i think let me take a small pause here because sometimes yes, we 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 always talk about those things management commitment availability spare parts we know those things yeah that is let's say yes, like we have a very good team and uh, yes, things are well trained we spend a lot of time on them now management commitment they always say yeah we are very committed and we want that equipment should be right so that's why we have the team yes. but most of the cases they don't buy spare parts in time yeah will that, that, still you feel that your maintenance team is going to be impactful uh, for that we have to 
make understand management sir for example um what will happen mostly consumable things in cash on industry is just le- let's take shelling blades we cannot ask them every time for example if you take 500 blades after two months we cannot ask them again so that they will be irritated that okay why what is happening why these guys are asking always so for that we have to have a plan of annual spares this will save even uh, management also one time investment if you invest once in a in a year can pass so this will help us a lot by communicating to the management for example one thing we cannot ask 10 times 10 things we can ask in one time so that is the principle that management commitment and at this time they also will support us by seeing the results and performance and uh, the the spares what we are spending even so that we have means, to yes sir yeah so that means a maintenance program start with uh, uh, your your uh, planning to support management that what you are expecting from the management yes and sir. how it is feasible it's not every day it needs a really planning and yes. i think that's a very common factor where sometimes we buy spare parts for two months and that disappear fast yes we are not having still the spare parts available in in all the countries it always comes uh, uh, majority of it comes from from other countries it takes time so yes. the management commitment actually uh, comes should be supported by the those facts what you are looking for as a maintenance team and as a maintenance manager okay yes sir so that's what that's that's a very important part which i i see here and then when the second part which i notice here is maintenance schedules yes when we we always talk about oh yeah every day we will do this every day we will do that every day we will do that but till we will not write it we are not committed to it so yes. in maintenance in, in in general practice these people always come every day and uh, they just put their you know clothes put their gloves go to the machine yes. do every day same sort of things it's not that they are not doing it but if they are not writing it they are not putting it into a right plan when i will do what and how i will do that then still they they are going to find a lot of issues on the maintenance side so yes. i encourage again so the maintenance plans are not just merely in your head it should be yeah. well written it should be on paper so that yes. we can use them as a checklist okay. yes and Great. it should be with proof it should be with proof that what is before and what is after and before what is the results after what is the results so this this all should be there and this entire schedule and plan depend on maintenance team and training so point 1 is uh, clearly included with point 4 if you can see it, it both okay, are relevant. so now so once we did so that means the spare requisites once is in place uh, we can do all the maintenance yes sir okay so let let us go for next slide yes sir sorry okay please yeah uh, it's not done yes it's now so processing stages i think uh, everyone knows these processing stages i don't need to explain much about this so let me go through each and uh, every section like everyone knows that cleaning and calibration steaming shelling drying humidification so these are normal sections now let's go to one by one section so now cleaning and calibration cleaning is okay uh, let's come to uh, later on cleaning what is the problems with the cleaning now let's go to calibration for calibration based on calibration entire processing is depended every every section after calibration is depended on calibration only because if calibration is not perfect it will not shell well when it is not shelling well you don't get good holes or uh, you will get most uncuts or either back cuts and all then once you get most more uncuts you cannot reach your targets target means your packable holes will reduce automatically it will reduce so there is many issues if uncut is more your uh, dw will increase so oily holes will be so for that we have to have proper plan in calibration how calibration is going on at what speed we are running that is most important let's come to one by one point uniform uniform flow of uh, material in drum how calibrate calibration system will be there is a drum there is a input conveyor or screw conveyor whatever it is so the drum will rotate while it is rotating the material flow should be uniform if uh, if you put 10 bags at a time after that one bag so the load will be more at the time what will happen most of the material will come for next sections only 
for that what we have to do we have to definitely we should use a, uh, a vfd drives variable frequency drives it will give uniform sound uniform flows so then what will happen there is not much possibilities of mixing ratio and all and coming to next point drum holes clearance what will happen when uh, sometimes this is very rare if we have uh, proper clearance or clearance rod on the drum then this issue, this issue will not come for that also we have to continuously monitor sometimes some threads will stuck in the holes some some holes will block with some small nuts for, for to clear that we have to put a roller which will clear continuously if it is not there then the, oh, all the holes will block and material will come for come for the next grades so this will become again mixing ratio and the maintenance of input and output elevator so like like we said maintenance of uh, machinery in that what uh, for every calibration there will be the system of input and drum and output conveyors most of the people will not use to uh, use for output conveyors if we go for uh, 60 or 50 tons then only these required for example if you are below 20 30 tons this is not required for output conveyors these conveyors we have to monitor continuously why i am telling this because if one elevator stops you have to stop entire calibration system because without without elevators we cannot give input so anything can happen and by the way this is a raw material directly touching to the material means what will happen the metal can be worn out and if any casho fall in any bucket or any screw or any wrong place then what will happen it will collapse so for that for that what we have to do it should not be spillage more casho should not spill all over the floor that is number one and number two we have to lubricate continuously as next point next point we can see that clit c l i t cleaning lubrication inspection and tightening these things has to happen in every preventive maintenance day it means that in a week every day in a week one day we have to spend on that section that we have to do all the clit then only this can sustain otherwise what will happen after running some uh, around 6 or 7 months all them all for example if you take screw conveyors it will worn out because of dust because of dust because uh, when we get raw material there should be some dust some stones and all for that we need cleaning pre cleaning section that that is uh, that is different pre cleaning is what it will do we can separate the dust and stones then after that it uh, our shelling machines or cooking or uh, calibration will not get most dirty and all dirty means uh, let's go to if we go to shelling there all the uh, brushes and cutters and jaws all the things will uh, stuck up with the dust for that it will take much time to maintain or clean the things so if we do pre cleaning pre cleaning there these all the things will reduce so we don't need to do anything for that so pre cleaning is for that that machinery is totally different and collecting of material collecting of material is as per the uh, factory and management commitments how we are going to collect how we take the material i mean that uh, what we used to do we used to collect material in this jumbo bags because uh, because of space consumption and all we used to collect in jumbo bags as size wise will keep a side for example if we cook after sizing is different scene and size after cooking is different scene so uh, what i have seen many is cooking and sizing so it depends on it depends on the performance and results and the machinery what we have taken so there is so many particularities how we have how to process so collecting of material is is a good option and if not we can move it online so that it will be very fine by putting uh, conveyors and bucket elevators so directly material will go to the uh, cooking pot so it will save a lot of time and it will reduce manpower and we don't need to material movement in forklifts and all so so much cost will reduce in that and uh, vfd controllers as i said for uniform flow we have to put a vfd definitely we have to put then only we can sustain otherwise uniform flow will not will not happen then what will happen mixed ratio will increase and drum will choke all the material will come forward and drum will get overload when you put more then what will have to uh, shaft will break or gearbox shaft will break many things are there so for that it is not a, it's not much much costly thing mostly these are coming with around with oi original equipment man machinery only it is coming and the pre cleaner checklist this is the checklist every day we have to spend at least 10 minutes that all the all the things all the motors all the drums and all we have to check at least one day and while we are checking we have to tick that okay it's okay if the condition is fine if the condition is not okay some mistake is problem we have to plan a schedule in the next schedule maintenance we have to attack on that then this uh, surprise or heart attack breakdowns will reduce and safety precautions as everyone knows that safety is most important because 
uh this is heavy machinery indra calibration is very huge machinery means huge means it's a big so anything can happen because some what i face with the calibration i have clear cut experience with that one guy put his hand on the drum so if in if he is aware of that he cannot do that so that is the thing we have to take uh, safety precautions most most have to do that so let's come into a next section steaming this is most important part as i learn a lot from this uh, this system especially as a mechanical engineer when i entered in casho industry i have gone through steaming and also so let's go one by one maintain of maintaining maintaining of steam flow at cookers this can do anything in casho industry if steam flow is not proper it will make us cry in uh, cooking and shelling and and uh, this coloring and all because if steam flow for example uh, mostly we required four bar pressure at every cooker the four bar pressure has to be sustained it should be four bar only while it is contacting with the material with casho if it is increasing or if it is decrease your cooking will be bad if it is increase our color will change and it will be overcooked material will spoil for that to maintain that uniform flow uniform flow of steam we have to use prs pressure regulation system pressure regulating system which will control the pressure for example the system will be steam will come from boiler from there some piston valve from there prv from there again piston there safety valve from that material uh, steam will go to the cooker in this system prv pressure regulator valve is the key key uh, key part what will happen if if uh, in the steam line if you have eight bar pressure it will reduce it to four bar and it will continuously it will give if even it is four bar at there it will give four bar only even it is eight bar it will give four bar only we can we have to adjust that whether sometimes if we put only less material in the pot we have to reduce it to three bar if you have full of the cooker for example one ton capacity we can we can load only 800 or 850 kg only for that we have to reduce it to that what we required around four bar so this is most important thing if if we lost control there we should not uh, expect much results from the cooking or from shelling so cooking pot temperature gauges those temperature and pressure gauges we have to monitor continuously sometimes what will happen even if it is no no pressure it will show two bar this this i faced personally i cried literally with the steam <laughs> then i learned my, many things from the steam so we have to check that we have to off the steam then we have to check the gauge whether it is coming to zero or not if it is not coming to zero 100% we have to change the gauge this is damn sure we have to change otherwise what will happen it will it will when we you give two bar pressure it will show four bar it means that there is actually two bar only what we are seeing is four bar which means it is only having two bar it is it showing uh, errors so for that we have to continuously monitor when we whenever we are starting a day we have to do that then we have we can start next procedure and the steam traps and moisture separators it depends on the distance from boiler and cooker if the distance is more the traps will increase the moisture separators will increase to reduce water content in cooker pot if the distance is more and we don't have traps and moisture separator then what will happen most yeah, in the meantime if the distance is around let's take 60 meters what will happen in the meantime steam will get condensed and those water directly will come to the cooker pot then what will happen cooking will not happen well and the moisture will be very high it will increase highly and it will take much time to dry sometimes it will not dry because all the all the operators and supervisors cannot focus on that they will be in sop so for example 14 hours mean they'll keep 14 hours and they'll throw away because they also under pressure they will take the material for that we have to lock all the all the things like this so every 25 to 30 meters we have to put a trap and moisture separator it will reduce the condensity and if you put uh, these insulation of the steam lines then the next point is that steam line insulation if you put insulation these losses will not happen and steam will be very high efficient like saturated steam and all yes like uh, next uh, steam consumption these we have to get from the original equipment machinery who is making the cooker there is three types of cooker one is rotary type one is static one is pressure vessels that the, the, these is uh, for example rotary type now it is free injection system and like everyone knows it is a free injection system there what will happen the consumption will be little high when consumption is high you have to check the we have to check the uh, boiler capacity also for example if it is uh, one ton boiler the consumption is 250 kg per uh, kg per hour 250 kg per hour means continuously it will take 250 if we have four cookers this one ton boiler is enough for that 
so that we have to uh, coordinate with the oem and uh, the boiler guys and then it will come to know that what is the consumption and the consumption has to continuously monitor there should be a meter which can which can read the steam consumption per hour so th from that we can understand that if any steam is wastage because steam is it's it's, it's valuable thing steam is we cannot waste the steam and the condensed water also we have to recirculate to the boiler so there is many things when we go uh, deeply inside that and uh, proper cooking to do proper cooking we have to follow up all the all the above points uh, steam flow and loading and moisture separate and insulation these all the consumption these all things we have to maintain well then only the cooking will happen proper material movement proper material movement like we said in uh, calibration right now also the uh, material movement will be uh, like what i've seen many companies after cooking will connect in the bins so no need to pour on the floor i did i did it before we have to pour on the floor to dry it after that we have to collect in the bags again let's move it to shelling so after that even uh, shakti sir suggested that uh, okay let we can do this because this is the uh, benefits of sharing knowledge so we we made some bins which is around 700 kg per bin so one batch one pot one uh, one bin is is matching so these all the things all the things will help us to uh, perform well uh, while we are discussing with others like like i said uh, now shakti sir suggested me to why, why don't you do this so it is helped us now we are saving much time much space space consumption that is most important so uh, that's cool next uh, safety, Bala, safety. Let's, uh, let's take a small pause here because this sometimes we feel calibration is just calibration you know the conveyor is putting everything inside drums are rotating output is coming and steaming is just steaming we just open the wall and take 10 minutes or 12 minutes and it's cooked but but yeah, i think but uh, the participant like has to understand this is not just as simple as we we, we see yeah yes yes small, so that's small why things. i have when we say all... yeah maintaining steam flow and at cookers yeah. that every time it has to be four bar pressure and we we talk about the yes, special release you know systems you know how to regulate the system cooking pour temperature gauge steaming line leakages and traps you know steam traps this is a very important part we usually don't yeah. do it we usually yes, don't do it and, and those, if we use also things, sir uh, what will happen if you use traps and moisture separators also it will get stuck within one week no one will check that i have seen many there, there is a trap but it is not working so we have to do maintain in that also maintenance schedule so that's again say it's not enough that to buy a equipment all the time or make a, a, a trap you have to make yes. sure that we are actually looking at, at it and releasing it when the time comes so frequent yes. uh, the frequency have to be really rigor we have to be very consistent when yes, we are sir. approaching to it yeah tell me one thing many many of the factories have the issues that they uh, they suddenly double the drying drying time they say well because it's uh, the cooking is not well done and i think this is because of what the 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 you know condition which you explain they they are facing those things that when they cut it it is it is not actually cutting it well it has a lot of back cuts did it have any any, any issue with the yeah, steaming there, is there, is, there, there is there there is two things sir sir uh, what is the moisture percentage of raw nut is is play a lot i think you are aware of that if it is uh, the raw nut what we buy if it is 11% of moisture so even after cooking also the results will be horrible and and the uh, even in shelling the, the the part is different like when we go to shelling then we, uh, it will come out easily so for now the moisture if the moisture is high we should not increase cooking time we have to reduce it because there is already moisture if you put more uh, more time of cooking like uh, for example let's take outputs a b c d these are the calibrate outputs for that if if for example we are using uh, let's take 12 minutes for a d should be more because in d nuts which is immature not immature the small nuts the shell thickness will be high and it will be very hard the bigger one so these are the parameters we have to calculate uh, we have to do paperwork on them what is input moisture what are, what is my uh, what is the time i am to go, i'm going to cook and for a nuts how much how many minutes i have to put for d nuts how many minutes either we have to reduce for example if you use uh, d nut 14 minutes so b should be 12 then it has to come down like that so these all the things if we go properly by doing paperwork 
things will be under our eyes so we can we can know that okay this i'm doing a mistake then we can realize ourselves great so thank you let's let's keep start yeah sir this is done safety precautions as always uh, so for the major part of cash flow industry so selling um, machine capacity yeah, let's go one by one machine capacity machine capacity will will be depend on the number of strokes and number of cutters of the machine for example if a machine having six cutters and the strokes will are uh, 68 to 70 mostly it will happen those for that we have uh, the, in the next slide there is i, I made a uh, slide that uh, what how to calculate the uh, machine capacity that we'll discuss later shelling light design and material flow this is most important so mostly what uh, what what will happen we used to get some machines and uh, like vertical or uh, horizontal whatever the cutting machines so the cutting machines is is fine that whatever we can choose or how because based on maintenance and uh, the technical support and technical team the machines will perform well but that is the issue now after that after cutting how the material is moving this is most important and what are the things are separating in the line itself or if we don't do that we have to do it get it collect it and we have to do one by one by one by one this is nonsense so if we if we put if we if we continuously we have to choose the machinery after cutting what is happening after means uh, in a sewer in the sewer walls are directly going to the uh, collecting bin and after that the uncut and half cut half cut means the partial uh, unscooped holes and unscooped pieces these things are going to the uh, shooter things what, what is happening at the shooter after that how we are separating half cut and uncut this is the material flow this is line machine line design that we have to choose while we are selecting the machine whatever uh, what we see most of most what we'll see the uncut is less and holes percentage is high let's buy the machine no it is it will not work like that we have to control all the process flow what is happening there where shell is collecting where we are collecting all the holes and pieces are we able to separate holes and pieces there itself or to separate that or we should buy another machinery so there is so many lines where holes and pieces were separated in the included line and half cut and uncut also will separate there itself as well as shell also separated there itself now the technology is increased that even dust from the kernel also separating there by putting classification so these all the things we have to look into uh, while choosing uh, shelling line design and all otherwise it will make horrible we have we have to take manpower continuously 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 if even if we if little manpower reduce on the day so the uh, stock will pile up when stock will pile up owop this will increase a lot so these all the things most important cutting machine process let me tell you uh, cutting machine process what i have faced before there was uh, uh, six cutters six cutters uh, what i used before six cutter machine there is collecting material means there is spoons after spoons the brushes will stop the material after that it will put in the cup from the cup finger balls finger bars will take it to the rail from the rail pusher bar will take through the fixed zone movable zone then blade and splitter this is the machine cutting machine process here what are the mostly consumable things what are, what we are uh, spending much spare on the machine which is by this we will come to know that cutting machine process most of the thing direction bars made with plastic so what will happen if we run around to one or two months then this will be right off and let's come to brushes brushes the, i told you pre clean if pre cleaning is not there or dust is most more coming with the uh, rock ash or not what will happen these brushes will get stuck because it will it is cooked it will be very stinky and what we call uh, very oil and very dusty so brushes will stuck when brushes stuck it will allow the uh, it will allow all kind of nuts the purpose of brushes is double nuts should not go to the machine only single nut has to go in feeding bar so what will happen if brushes are not good double nuts will go when double nuts are going machine performance is going down and machine cap machine uh, efficiency will go down and machine will collapse so many things will happen in the machine because double nut will not go in the flow it will go either this side or this side when it is touches to anything something will damage or something will misalignment because operator will set to set the machine what based on the result based on this double nuts it will miss uh, it will change all the things so results will go anywhere we cannot control that after that adjustment of cutter 
this adjustment of cutter is purely 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 depends on operator who is controlling the operator because he is the only person knows what is the result is coming if uncut is coming more he has to check and he has to cut he has to adjust the cutter if false is coming less he has to adjust if if he has to check the kernel whether back cuts are coming okay let's move the cutter little high so that uncut should not come and uh, this back cut should not come result should be he has to set a point that all the things are neutral all the things are fine so the, for that adjustment of cutters we have to train operator every week and we have to ask him we have to ask him continuously that what is your line performance where is your line samples what is the things so when we are interacting and when we are asking when we are focusing on everything these things will be under control adjusting cutters only the key point to get success in shelling so uh, durability of blades and splitters this depends on material and material of the blade so what type of blades we have choose and what is the material for that uh, mostly we can say that hss high speed steel will be there now now uh, there is so many things that uh, carbon steel is coming so when we go to high end qualities blades lifetime will come let me tell you one thing hss will take around 12 hours to replacement means replacement means we have to regrind re it what will happen every 12 hours changing the blades for entire machines is biggest headache to the operators then he will get nervous there itself he cannot perform well he cannot check all the things he will change blade if if someone says the results are coming back he will be think that are yaar what is happening so we cannot so for that if if we give the, the best quality of the blades means if 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 you change the blades now it is sustaining for around 3 4 days then operator can focus on another part of the machines for example sievers elevators conveyors blowers Uh, vibrating sievers these all the things he can focus on the things so that machine can not damage every 12 hours he is changing blades means he will come in the morning he will fix change the blades and he has to adjust the cutters entire day while going he has to change the blades so he cannot focus on anything except changing the blades for that we have to give the best uh, quality of blades and splitters so that his focus will be on the requirements what management is asking what what is what is uh, supervisor what is what uh, old percentage so this all, he has to focus on that this will happen when we give the best thing and uh, skilled operators as i said adjustment of cutters done by skilled operators only while choosing or while we are training these toolbox trainings and all the trainings we have to do every day then only operator can do the fine for that let me tell you honestly for that uh, we have taken uh, one year to train in nigeria so it is not an easy thing to make an operator so perfectly so uh, proper ca calibrated casho like i said if calib in calibration if casho is uh, not calibrated well here it will it will give uh, tears to us because for example a size nut is there which is 24 mm like, like, let's say example in a line one if if in a line if you put 24 mm casho it will cut 24 mm only because operator will tune the machine to 24 mm only because of improper calibration 22 mm will come 23 mm will come 22 mm will come this will what will happen it will come as uncut only because it will not touch to the any blade it will come out so what will happen uncut wear increase that uncut has to go to another machinery while we are running uncuts in the machine what will happen machine performance will reduce it to 40% it will reduce 40% whenever we are putting uncut in a machine 40% results will drop 100% that is sure to reduce that we have to calibrate well so that is the reason i mentioned here proper calibration of top prevent to maintenance and clit as i said for each and every section prevent to maintenance has to be done what i i used to do is prevent to maintenance means every day we used to take one line with maintenance team let's let, let, they will take around 2 hours there they will check each and i i mentioned that checkpoint in the next slide you can see that after that after this so there he will check each and everything whether it is okay or not okay or not okay or not by, by listening the sound if it is not okay if it is small thing he can do he, he will do that immediately if the big issue is there something is going to damage within 2 3 days for example some receiver service which is very heavy load thing so it will damage so he has to note down that okay this is this is the thing going to happen so that we have to we have to plan in next maintenance day or next sunday we are we are going to do that so this preventive maintenance and clit clit has to be done especially this in cash in as per my experience in cash on industry total maintenance should focus on the uh, this uh, shelling only because not other machines will 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 get damaged regularly the, only this section will get uh, it will screw up anything because continuous running process shelling will run continuously if you are, if you are running uh, two shifts 
out of 24 hours 22 to 20 21 to 22 hours continuously will run all the machines then only will reach the uh, management targets otherwise we cannot do for that machine will be overload at all it will be huge overload for that we have to do we have to focus most on shelling only the and uh, outputs collection control and outputs as we said control and outputs is uh, is uh, depends on operator the person who is uh, controlling the uh, uh, entire machinery for example what will happen there is some uh, roller conveyors i think uh, this is the machine which is separates half cut and uncut what will happen half cut will uh, fall down and uncut will go fall while two rollers are rolling down what will happen if operator is not aware of that he don't have control on that he don't know how to control that what will happen half cut and uncut also mix in that or in uncut half cut will go on this once half cut is mixing with uncut we are damaging cashew one it is our mistake clearly if uncut is coming in half cut what will happen we cannot scoop well and manpower will increase there so these are the things uh, that is right that is uh, mentioned here control and output has to be done and outputs collections is 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 uh, depends on the uh, on the machinery line as i said the design of line so sometimes what will happen holes will collect at one place pieces will connect at one place some lines what will happen all the things will come at one place so the, these things collection output collection have we have to choose while we are taking the shelling line that is most important separation of outputs as i said there is, for separation of outputs here we have three types one is sieve means vibro vibro conveyor number one number two Uh, roller conveyors number 3 classifiers these three are the separation in shell these three only can separate and super calibrator also uh, the calibrator which will separate holes and pieces that is one and half cut and uncut that is two and uh, classifier which will remove dust from that Th these are the separation these four units are inside the shelling means in shelling line is there or not if it is there our life will be very easy and manpower will be reduced and time and efficiency everything will be under control if these four most most of the thing these four should be there now everyone is uh, planning with these four only so these things is most important like regular consume regular consumption so like i said in a shelling machine itself there will be 12 parts in a shelling machine itself from uh, brushes feeding bars catching cups and uh, direction bars uh, fixed jaw mobile jaw rail blade splitter th these these all the things availability of these all the things we have to separately maintain a list of it what is the stock today and what is what is going to consume and normally how operators will come if you don't get results what he will think that okay let's check the direction bar let me get the good result he will think he will be on that in that only for that what we have to do we have to maintain a special focus on uh, uh, this uh, consumption and spares and all so reduction of manpower like we said if we don't have for example let's take separation of holes and pieces if we don't have super calibration in input uh, sorry uh, inbuilt uh, shelling line what will happen to separate that we have to put a manpower on that or, or we have to go for the sorting machines so so manpower will increase that for example let's take shooting shooting means uh, offline shooting if we have unscooped holes and unscooped pieces we have to put in shooting if we don't have that that system what will happen we have to scoop every day for so that manpower will increase for, as per that separation of dust separation of half cut and cut if if a machine reduce in a line so that manpower will increase so for that what we have to do we we have to be mostly mechanized then or or we have to maintain the process should be in online way then what will happen um, uh, manpower will reduce 100% manpower ha, red, uh, there, the, in as per management view there is some uh, worker per bag and all so that uh, they will give some exactly manpower what we required to 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 justify to to maintain that well we have to follow these all the things and power consumption power consumption uh, like I, uh, i made a separate slide for this in electrical that will uh, discuss later hygen floor and toolbox training like we said for all operators we have to give every day toolbox training that what is the what is happening with the machine what is the condition of that we have to monitor continuously then only we can explain him what is uh, what he has to do and what is his plan and the way he use the uh, machinery the way he deals with the machinery that we have to observe then we have to guide it and hygen floor uh, this this depends on the the people uh, means what we can say um for example if a person who is focusing on the results the, he he don't know that how to hygiene the floor the person who is focusing on hygiene he cannot do that, that what we have to do the supervisors the person who is handling the shaft floor controller he has to focus on both 
so then only this hygiene floor will happen and it will give uh, proper material means uh, this dirty holes this damage of uncuts uh, half cut will be get black so these things will reduce by using hygiene floor so safety precautions everyone knows that shell is very danger to the body this is cnsl so for that what we have to do we have to continuously apply oil and all that is yes shelling machine capacity like i said a machine capacity is based on the number of strokes in that like uh, like you can see uh number of lines for example a1 line a1 the uh, line is uh, line, number of line means only one line not count not count everyone knows in cash flow industry that what is not count so the, those not count based on that not count we can calculate the strokes of the machine the capacity of the machinery let's take i may have mentioned here uh, machine strokes per hour 64 these strokes we have we can note with any machinery for example if you if you start behind the machine if you if you start stopwatch in 60 seconds how many strokes are generating how many strokes are generating in 60 seconds that is strokes per hour that we have to multiply by 60 then the strokes will come this is my machinery what i used so that that's the reason it is neutral for all because machine will be same so let is let's let's go to machine capacity per hour as per not count based on not count this capacity will per hour 165 kg of rock ash on that it can cut in that we have to remove idle strokes like i mentioned here after idle stroke it, it is reduced line capacity oh, sorry per one hour one machine is 165 kg per we have five machine five machine for five machines it is 827 in that we have to reduce 10% of idle strokes you know idle stroke means what will happen like i said if 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 a brush or if a feeding cup is not carrying cash flow so it is an idle stroke it cannot cut that mostly between 5 to 7% only i have taken for safe side i have taken 10% so that we have to remove from that and uncut percent also we have to remove that uh, it it after first pass and second pass all the thing it will be around 7% but i have mentioned 25% because let's take in safe safe zone for the, <laughs> for the thing so if after removing this what will happen capacity per hour capacity per hour of an entire line is 555 kg per hour this is after removing idle strokes uncuts and all so these 558 kg we have to take it as a machine capacity this is and i mentioned as shift wise that is different from this so those we have to calculate this then only we have to give the target to the selling section so if it if we take that 40 yeah, how many 48 tons came so we can fix the target based on this back calculation this will help a lot so uh, this is about machine capacity not much yes uh, as i said um, shelling machinery this is for every section we have to do but i for sample i just mentioned only for shelling machine so as i mentioned here all the spares while checking whether it is okay or not okay or not every day they have to maintain the person who is checking who is verifying authorized by we have to maintain this as well as now this is for machine like uh, in in this slide the first one is for ma sh uh, shelling machine the second one is for total entire shelling line as ma machine 1 2 3 4 so we mentioned here these all the things we have to monitor continuously and we have to uh, uh, perform well with that so sir shakti sir any <laughs> anything so i'm speaking alone <laughs> i'm coming now i'm coming yes because this is uh, this is very important part when you say shelling where everyone actually have issues with the uh, with processing so here some point to note again uh, i would like to just repeat few things which i think everyone uh, should really notice yes sir bala explain the importance of cleaning now not yes, when it was there because the impact of cleaning actually is more on shelling part rather than anything else because if we yes. not do cleaning before calibration after cooking this 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 part will stick with the cashew shell and that actually deposited over time on the brushes of the, the of the peel and then that actually will not allow to have a uniform feeding and then you have a lot of yes. uncuts you see the small thing yes, is giving you a lot of trouble where we each day we are talking about we shelling machine problems of the brushes problem of the feeding but that start from the from the cleaning uh, calibration you already spoke about it one thing here to notice about is is designing of the lines yes so sir this is a simple request that when we are we are buying equipment 
uh, please buy a complete line because the, the overall objective is going to achieve only when you have the complete line. Sometimes we buy one, one part and then we say, oh, this part we can do it manually. And we are ended up having hiring more workers because uh, once cash flows are processed by machine and then the later stage, if you would like to do it manually, it's very, very tough and the productivity level of the workers are too low. And then we ended up hiring quite a lot of workers. One thing which I find here is the, the most important thing is uh, we say clean. cleaning, yes, lubrication, you know, lubrication, inspection and, and tighten. These yes. four small things. And that's the very important part of every section, but it implies a lot on the shelling part because that actually takes around 50% of your, 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 your trouble out in the shelling section. Can you imagine? Second thing is he's talking about the quality. It's not that the availability of space. The quality of space is also matters. If you, the quality of space are not good, that is going to yes. give a hard time to the maintenance. Then maintenance cannot do more than just all time spent on, on, on machine. They cannot maintain their record. They, they cannot actually uh, go with the plan. It's, it's very hard. Or you have to have a big fleet of workers. But looking at the scope of uh, maintenance, I think it is very clear that management have to just make their mind that today's maintenance is not just four or five people. Today's maintenance, you would need a real team and enough resources. You have to allocate good resources for this function. This itself is, is quite important thing today. Now, second thing is uh, understanding the capacity. You look here, eight, eight lines, each line have five, uh, machines still the capacity is 48 tons per day. And that's not how what we do. We actually sometimes uh, say five machine, each machine 400 kilograms multiplied by this. So each machine capacity is two ton multiplied by eight, you know, and that's how, and this much of hours we will do. And we say, oh, eight machine is 64 tons a day. And then we want to achieve that. And we feel that we are not achieving it. So we are underperforming. It is not actually like this. The yes. actual, capacity is 48 tons. And if we are doing approximately this, we are doing very good. Uh, when we say uh, having the, this, uh, this, this, this type of uh, documents, these always helps. So you can easily go back. And that's a very, very important part of the, of the job. Sometimes it feels oh, it's too much of paperwork, but it is not actually, uh, we should not see it in that way. It doesn't take more than uh, 30 minutes every day, but it is actually the, the very intrinsic part of the maintenance uh, uh, systems. Okay, let's go front. Drying, uh, <clears throat> yes sir, drying ovens and humidifications. I mean, drying ovens means it's a boma and humidification. So uh, let's come into this after shelling, the material will come to drying. So what will happen, we'll load into the trays and uh, there also we can put uh, a lot of machinery by loading atom uh, to reduce manpower there. That is different issue. Uh, so. Let's come to uh, here, steam connections and PRS. So like we said for cooking, here also we have to use PRS for uh, proper steam flow. Mostly what will happen, the consumption of steam flow is very less here for the ovens because here what will happen, let me try to explain uh, in technical terms. There is, uh, by using these all the slides, there is a solenoid wall and steam line will come to the solenoid wall and this solenoid wall will connect it to the temperature controller those temperature controller is we have to we have to adjust that for the in the temperature controller there is two terms set value and present value set value we have to give what is the temperature we required we have to adjust to the 70 for example 78 so that present value will if the more for example let's take i put 75 that is the, the uh, present value uh, only is uh, 30 what will happen this will send signal to the uh, solenoid wall then solenoid wall will open then steam will come inside that this is the normal process of all the ovens. So here we have to maintain many things here. Number one, steam connections. The steam connections and there should be no leakage, however, and it should be insulate and PRS, pressure regulation system here also most important because from the, uh, from the uh, boiler, it will come around six to seven bar pressure. So if the six to seven bar pressure directly coming to the solenoid wall, solenoid wall just get burned and it cannot perform well. Once solenoid 
burn we can we cannot find out that it is burn or it is working we cannot even do that until we open and see that most of the people will not open and see that i'm, I'm damn sure so for that what we have to do we have to put a pressure uh, regulator and there here we required only 1.5 to 2 bar pressure only not like the in cooking we used to 4 bar so here it will be very less consumption and less only here we required heat not steam so what will happen P, uh, from the prs we we have to set it to the 2 bar then the 2 bar less mid 2 bar means very uh, small means very less compared with uh, cooking so it will come to the uh, solenoid valve there when at at the solenoid valve when it is reaching 3 bar solenoid valve get burn that we cannot notice that so at, at that time what will happen huge heat will generate inside and cash will get damaged means uh, color will change uh, what we call uh, red holes red holes will generate more so that that is the reason uh, number 2 uniform uniform uh, ambient in the oven what will happen so uh, there will be some fans the, like i mentioned here temperature uh, sorry motor condition and alignments these uh, fans will make uh, when steam is passing through the pipeline inside the oven then uh, fans will continuously blow the air to that so that what will happen air will be circulate all over that this should be happen for mostly what will happen there is a gauge inside on the top of that and that gauge will get uh, heat and it will show in that that is a false one so what will happen what we have to do is we have to check all over the oven before putting the material inside that we have to by using temperature gun we have to check the temperature in that and temperature of the trolley the material uh, temperature that we have to check physically every one hour every two hours we have to check moisture and all so then only from the oven results will happen if drying results are good for shelling cooking is most important for peeling for dry drying is most most important if if the, if in bormas are not performing well and we are not focusing at ovens what will happen we cannot get peelability once we don't get peelability unpeeled will increase once unpeeled will increase the cw and the, so many manual things will increase so many manpower will will increase so many things will happen for that if the, these are in the dryer there is nothing only solenoid valve and temperature these two only we have to check continuously and uh, this as i mentioned temperature controls and indicators that is fine solenoid valve motor conditions and alignment there should be uh, in the oven what will happen motor will run continuously with 1500 rpm so what we what will happen the fan while while it is running what will happen the bottom bearing or uh, this uh, everything will get loose and it will make noise sometimes what will happen it will get for accident the fan uh, the fan it will break and it will hit to the trolleys if it is open it will hit to the people so the conditions of uh, both we have to continuously monitor, monitor, uh, check and temperature tolerance let's come to this for example if set value is 50 for uh, let's take 78 set value the present value will, value should be plus or minus 2 only this is the, the tolerance we have to continuously monitor 77 or 79 it should not go beyond or uh, higher than that so this tolerance we have to notify that and uh, humidification time let's go to that uh, humidification is depends on the results or country and the place what we are where we are doing there is so many issues that how we are going to do humidification for example what we used to uh, we used to get good results from by steam only by giving free steam to the trolleys then it will get uh, around uh, 10 to 15 minutes we used to get good peelability in that so sometimes we will give some people will use steam some people will use cooling chambers some people will this uh, spray of uh, what we call um, this I forget that uh, cooling chambers in that yes i mentioned here so the so many things are there to uh, to get it cool but what will happen for cooling chambers it will take 12 hours if you use steam it will be around 12 to 13 minutes only from 12 hours to 12 minutes is is much gap and as well as we have to look into color also so sometimes what will happen if steam is more and water content also will be more so then color will reduce in uh, this uh, ww white holes color will drop so there is so many things fine tuning the steam and releasing steam what will have what we have to do we have to put 5 minutes steam and we have to stop and after that 5 minute th- these are all the trials we have to do after doing so many trials what 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 i it conclude to me is 10 minutes steam 10 minutes break 10 minutes steam then bring it out let's go for process this this given me good results so i'm little happy that's what i'm sharing with you it dip, so i'm not telling that do for do this for everywhere i did i got uh, success because uh, in i in uh, when i was in nigeria so this was perfect uh, weather the, uh, it was a fine tune matter for that so we got it uh, so i'm not telling that to do it for uh, all all the places 
it depends on we have to continuously monitor we have to continuously take trials then only these things will happen and uh, moisture we have to check moisture even after bore mall so what is the moisture before ovens and what is the moisture after ovens let, let, let me let me tell you one example what will happen in a oven if you put 8 hours the moisture before dryer is around uh, 8% moisture let, let's take after shelling it is 8% we have to reduce it to 1.9 to 2% moisture for better uh, peelability and better thermal cracks on the kernel the these thermal cracks on the kernel will play a crucial role in peelable peeling and all so uh, to get to to go there from 8 to 2% moisture we have to bring it back so for that what we have to do in 8 hours first 1 to 4 hours will be it will come 8 to 6 to 7 only from last to 1 hour last to 1 hour after keeping 8 hours in oven for 78 say 80 degrees temperature in that last 1 hour can burn the cashew means it will it will become red red walls so what will happen this moisture will come to reduce from 8 to 6 will will take much time 6 to 4 is much time but 4 to 2 it will take around 45 to 1 uh, hour only we have monitored these all things we have checked it and inspected everything so the, those things we have to continuously monitor after 2 uh, hours we have to check uh, moisture then only it will come to know and moisture and peelability and by eating we can know that what is the moisture and what is the condition of that so uh, moisture after that um, steamer cooking chambers it is our choice as i told you material movement like i said uh, after shelling we have to put material to the trolleys this is the normal process for that there is so many machineries to auto tray filling things or by that we can do our in factory itself that by putting a conveyor if we put a hopper just little higher so continuously if we put trolleys it will fill itself so time will save and manpower will save and uh, handling of material for example from shelling material will come into crates or buckets what we call so that from there we have to put in that from there we have to put in trolley so so handling of material will is increasing so what will happen damage of uh, the kernel also will increase so uh, this is my view on drying and humidification sir <laughs> thank you thank you i think uh, once more pressure regulatory system sometimes we yeah, don't here. follow this yes, small sir. thing but this is really important 1.2 to 2 bar pressure maximum for ovens we would need otherwise solenoid wall will 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 rupture and we will not be able to see it i personally saw many factories have overburnt cashews uh, in the ovens that's because of a solenoid wall is not functioning well temperature tolerance make sure that we are looking at the moisture during 8 hours that how moisture is actually disappearing or reducing and using steam or cooling chambers usually we use steam uh, that's uh, that's quite quick especially when we are in 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 mechanization so let's go for more we are not having much of time again it's getting yeah. quite interesting uh it's been already one hour sir <laughs> that's cool okay machine peeling so well, let's come to peeling Uh, as i said moisture content and thermal cracks on the kernel will play a crucial role on that excuse me so uh, for that uh, 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 sorry so moisture content we have to focus that after uh, after steaming after steaming of the kernel or cooling of the kernel we have to check the moisture when around 4 to 5% of moisture the peelability will be fine So that is fine uh, number 2 peeling machine there, there is two types of peeling machines as per management view and uh, cost and all we have to choose that whether we have to we, we go to spring type or batch type spring type is total different from that batch type is total different but there is some chances of getting more broken in batch type because there we have to use a 10 bar pressure for uh, 10 bar uh, compressed air to uh, do that so uh, for that what we have to do hello sir can you hear me i think my line was disconnected no we can hear we can hear you okay we fine can hear fine. you yeah uh, okay from uh, let, let's go with uh, spring type what will happen in spring type there will be a drum and there will be inside a shaft which is having the springs i think everyone knows who is uh, who is dealing with cashew so they knows very well this what will happen we uh, after that if there will be air peeler then that calibrator this is a normal thing to tune that there is so many uh, tricky things is there one number one 
when we put material inside the drum drum will rotate clockwise and shaft will rotate anti clockwise and there will be angle inside that uh, i forgot to put design in this so what will happen the inclined thing means the shaft will be uh, at the end at the starting it will be top and ending it will be down so what will happen all the kernel should contact with the springs for that if we increase the speed of uh, springs what will happen kernel will get broken if we if we decrease it we cannot get any availability likewise there is drum drum controller and shaft controller from if we increase drum uh, if we increase drum speed what will happen material will come very speedily if you put reduce what will happen material will be there itself and spring will hit continuously then damage will occur so the, the to we have to fine tune that by seeing the material if we fine tune that it will be at a certain point okay uh, we will get peelability as well as we will get uh, we will separate the husk there itself so material will come to the air peeler so this is one thing let's come to air peeler what will happen air peeler is is is, is uh, it will make cry sometimes if you don't have pressure or if you don't know the exact analyze on uh, what we call air consumption how many cfm required how much cfm we we have how what is the consumption of air if you don't have that it will make us cry we have to do more paperwork on that let's uh, let me share my point of view we have around five peeling machines for that we we used to have around 175 kilowatt compressor one is 37 kilowatt which is around 500 uh, cfm only which is not enough for the machine so what we we made so many kaizens and we we did so many things that to give uh, required pressure in the air peeler also there is two types one is four rail and two rail two rail will consume much pressure uh, will 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 consume less uh, less uh, less air means it will consume 5 uh, cubic meter per minute for this four rail it will consume 10 cubic meter per minute means one 25 kilowatt compressor separately required for one peeling machine so while choosing peeling machines we have to analyze what is our capacity of compressor how our compressor how much cfm it can generate and how much um, cubic meter per minute or or cfm it the consumption of the peeling machines when these are match all uh, always we have to be and side of high end so compressor air should be high so that sometimes the consumption will be high we cannot say that if any leakages are there so if the distance is more from the compressor to peeling machine the uh, it will it will reduce the uh, pressure so so many things to conclude in that so after seeing those all things what will happen we'll get for example mostly we require 5.5 to 6 bar pressure at this uh, spring type peeling machine so if it is reduced what will happen in the uh, the nozzles are not enough to remove the uh, testa from the kernel so what will happen until will comes and then same issue so this is the most important air pillar condition of that and it should not dirty if you if you are in, that is a is a free injection system what will happen the air pillar belt is dirty because of that uh, force pressure the kernel will hit to the, uh, the in the in the chamber the uh, air pillar chamber so then what will happen it will get the fine dust it will get the fine dust and it will touch it to it and it looks like uh, dirty holes dw so there is so many things and if our moisture is higher while we are taking it to peeling section if the moisture is high what will happen when moisture thing easily absorb the this fine dust very easily it will get dust to it so for that we have to maintain that if moisture is very less for example we are running peeling machine at 3 3% moisture what will happen when spring hit to it it will get broke so we have, we should not get broken so we should not we have to get peelability so for these all thing we have to fine tune the machine the operator should be very well trained person then only he can adjust that then that that is about uh, calibration of kernel is normal uh, the uh, calibrator it will separate uh, these uh, holes and pieces any uh, wsp is there any bb is there it will separate there itself and husk also will go there husk for husk there is uh, i mentioned here husk winnowing machine it will separate bb wsp husk and powder it will, it will separate everything there is so many machines for husk blowers and all winnowing is best selection and best results what i what i what i what i used in that so drum and shaft speed alignment this happen when operator is skilled one that is the reason i mentioned here skilled machine operator he is the key person there if he has to know clearly what is happening with the machine so if you don't know that he can do with these all things so for that we have to continuously go on we have to explain him baba uh, okay this is drum this is shaft we have to tune this check the results if it is okay do that no means no don't touch that or stop the machine come and discuss discuss so there is so many things in peeling section if because of based on that only uh, our ma manual sections and color sorters and uh, packing section every section is depends on peeling machines only 
So here, if we get around 60 to 70 peel, uh, peeling holes, life will be very easy. Yes, sir. Thank you. I think the moisture content play a major role in the peelability of kernels in peeling section. And that comes from oven part. Make sure that while we are we are feeding our peeling machines, uh, the moisture content should be between four to five. If it is like that, then we will see that we have a good peelability, but at the same time, we have quite good percentage of holes. Uh, okay, let's go. There, slide. Still, there is still there is so many things in uh, peeling here, but uh, it's it's okay. <laughs> That's enough. Grading machines. Um, so uh, for grading grading and separation we have many machineries right now but uh, the best one uh, the entire world is running behind is these color sorters here the sorting machines are very well and uh, they, they can that can separate all the things what we saw uh, we have the, the machine will be the way we give input the outputs will be so uh, there also we have to continuously monitor and we have to set the parameters that what we are getting so continuously we have to change color sorters but, and uh, manual grade manual grading is different everyone knows that this is a manual process it will do there is no need to discuss about manual things and uh, nano picks uh, i think uh, i think everyone knows that what nano picks is it will it is specially designed for uh, grading the cashew only i think everyone knows what um, i'm thinking that what will do it by capturing and by magneting and demagneting it will separate the uh, cashew by grade wise so this is different type and uh, this uh, what we call uh, color sorter mayur color sorry mayor color sorter also will do the same by it but the speed let me come let me compare with the speed then uh, mayor is very high but the speed is very high because it is around per hour we can get uh, 500 kg but uh, come, uh, but nanopix also will do more accurate accurate things we, i don't want to compare the machinery here so this is the things will happen in there so mechanical grading, mechanical grading, it's an old process by rollers as we, as, a, as in shelling, what we said by separate half cut and uncut. Here also same process, but the rollers are very much, the material will move from the rollers, then based on the sizes, we can collect the material, that is fine. Daily monitoring of this machinery is most important because all the, these machineries are uh, mostly PLC controller, programming logic control. Because if anything can happen, we cannot do anything in in, in as a maintenance as a maintenance uh, in charge. Even uh, some things I, I couldn't able to do that because the the, the uh, what we call special spe, uh, special trained persons only can handle and can do that. Even if, if I, I I used to try to do some things, but I didn't do exactly what they, they suggest me. So for that, we have to continuously monitor. Continuously, we have to be in touch with the manufacturer. Continuously, we have to kind of, kind of, so the, this is what, what is happening with the machine, what we did while cleaning. We have to train everything. So there is so many things. And uh, so uh, let's come into, in the grading, what I choose, what I prefer mostly, the uh, mayor is, is, is very cool in uh, sorting of uh, coloring and sorting and all even even in shelling also to a separate shell from the kernel it is giving like a 240 km that is very fine and uh, uh, in, in uh, what we call in after peeling we have to separate unpeeled peeled one and uh, spotted this all to separate this all thing there is so much so many missionaries if if you, if you go to if you, if you go to this uh, mayor and all they will give you all the things so what i use this is different from the availability and uh, daily monitoring, weekly clit, like we uh, like we discussed, what is clit for and all, we have to do that. And hygiene maintenance for floor and machinery, that is normal part of our job that we have to do. Safety precautions is normal for us. So this is what I can discuss about grading machines. Sir, pasteurization, pasteurization. <laughs> <laughs> I just little confused here. Yeah, on the grading side, uh, let me give you a small recap. The grading machines usually are high precision machines, and that required uh, daily cleaning, weekly yeah, yes, clean, sir. regularly. Yes. Daily cleaning is the most important part of grading machines, and and follow up. And uh, any and small thing, any uncertainty you see, uh, follow it, discuss it with the supplier, be in constant touch. Don't let this small problem to increase and one yeah, day yeah, you yeah. Let, let, let me it. share. Let me share one. Let me share one experience. Because uh, before lockdown, uh, there there is uh, no movement at all. But at the time, we have received one 120 LDS for color sorter, which is very very important to run the machine because uh, we required that. Based on that, our performance was very low. That machine arrived and uh, we are not able to install that because the person of uh, person from Mayer is in Ivory Coast. So he's, he cannot come because of lockdown. 
so we tried okay let, let, we, uh, mr joy i think you are aware of him he, uh, he start uh, i just requested him that, sir can we do that yeah you can do if you if you process the instructions of the technical guy he started teaching in the call so one by one one by one one by one one by installing all finally machine was uh, installed and it is fine so the the way the way we have to be contact with them continuously we are uh, we have to discuss with them so these things will happen so we should not depend on them 100% so uh, this was a good experience with mayor yes uh, pasteurization machine uh, so infrared curing machine is uh, it's a it's a very delicate machine that uh, we can we have to continuously monitor like what we said before missionary is different side and this missionary is total different if any mistake or anything happen the machine total can collapse the, the, the uh, uh, infrared curing machine that by heating light it will give it will heat the material to 200 degrees means the temperature of inside the chamber will be 200 and it will come out and it will get cold by uh, by contacting with uv rays so what will happen all the insects will die all the bacteria will die so this is the good control point uh, as in HACCP, this is uh, in uh, critical control point this is the best one to control all the things because no insect can come forward as well as no no what we call virus and the salmonella nothing will come forward because of this machine so we have to maintain that machine is uh, this machine work with the heating lights and uv rays lights this is the ma 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 major things in that that oh, but all the things will be controlled by plc only if we do any mistake in anything the entire setup has to has to be under breakdown for many hours so i faced many issues with that even i continuously even in touch with the uh, manufacturer who send us the machine so but the machine is very well and this, this this will give good results at all and high medium this is the machinery inspection what we have to do high medium and low infrared lights inspection that we have to do zone wise temperature calibration we have to continuously monitor in which zone what is the temperature there will be five zones all the zone we have to continuously check that what is set value what is present value but the inbuilt there in the machine there itself if the present value will be lesser than less uh, toll behind the tolerance the machine will stop by itself so no need to worry about that but we have to continuously monitor by using uh, this temperature gun so temperature controllers inspection if temperature controllers not not working well the machine will be down continuously cleaning of machine that has to be done by vacuum cleaning only so that, that uh, oem can give all the things uh, ultraviolet lights inspection that we have to check for that while we are checking we have to note down that we should not look into that i have seen once so my eyes was red for three days that is a disgusting issue but uh, we have to take care while we are inspecting all the things because it is very dangerous for eyes and checklist for belts and elevators this is most important that these lights is a part of that a part of these lights and uh, sensors and all these belts and uh, elevator is most important thing these are these are the most material movement things so we have to look into soft landing for example kernel is fallen from around 500 meters to here kernel will not damage if moisture is three percent if you fall if you throw it from 100 meters to down 100 sorry one meter to down now what will happen it will get broke so that is the reason why material is shifting one conveyor to one place we have to arrange soft landing we have to put soft landing then only what will happen kernel will not damage it will not broke up so soft landing is most important that is the reason checklist for belts and elevator we have to uh, check thoroughly then only this will happen zone temperature tolerance this is uh, the technical term which is we have to be do under uh, control with the oem then, then only it will be fine yes sir pasteurization I think, uh, on pasteurization i think this process is as a lot uh, that replace uh, at least three to five days no. of hurdles of fumigation of the kernels and that actually is, is just online uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah before we used to do online uh, yeah, before it used to be four before to five days, at least. Three days, three exactly. days, four days. Huh? Now and it is reducing one thing I think yeah. uh, we have to make, make sure that don't open this machine anytime. This is a usual mistake yeah. people do. I remember I was there yes. when, when Bala himself also opened it and looked inside <laughs> just to, he just forgot that he should not open it. So make sure that yeah, we put yeah. there some, 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 you know, uh, instructions. Never open it with bare eyes because it's you remember. You remember all, sir. <laughs> oh yes, I remember. remember. <laughs> That's fine, sir. So uh, next is pressurization is is clear. I think packing section. 
packing section for every cash on industry should be international standards that uh, what i continuously used from my management that based on that only factory performance is 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 made because if any if if if, if cloths are on the floor and the material is uh, moving like anything so it looks very dirty and very worse so that is uh, different from that so hygiene station maintenance means while we are entering into the packing room we have to do the normal appearance that uh, wearing an apron and shoe cover head net and nose mask and hand gloves hand gloves is 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 required it means is is optional that uh, what is the uh, company rules and and uh, and the missionary check uh, missionary cleaning checklist missionary mostly in packing there is very less missionaries so for that also we have to do continuously checklist because if anything down so packing will down if packing down entire factory performance will down so that that also even what are the machineries we have we have to continuously focus on that in preventive maintenance this is the uh, this is also a part of that so metal detector <clears throat> in cash of factory this is the only one for the control point if any metal is coming so the only the metal detector can control that that material is not mixing in the uh, finished goods if if the it is not there even any customer can suspect that uh, the uh, i don't know what is mixing and some uh, powder type what, uh, let, let me tell you one thing what happened uh, for example vibrating control sievers what will happen the, it will when one metal is touching to another metal sometimes though the, it will make some powder those powder what these uh, sweepers can do they will sweep sweep and they forget to know that they will put in the siever again so what will happen this particle will mix to that then it will go to the uh, uh, fg so what will happen meantime there we have to keep a metal detector then it will detect and it will separate all things it is a, it it should be there in all uh, finished goods and it it should be there in any every packaging industry so this is metal detector for for metal detector this metal toldo is the best one if, if the price is high we can choose another things so, so many things are available and vacuum packing machinery inspection those vacuum packing what will happen I, i think everyone knows before we used to do in the boxes now the everything is changed but i never worked with this uh, box sealing but now uh, i have seen many uh, vacuum uh, machineries it is quite well and it it will do the uh, it will do perform well for that we have to monitor uh, there should be no leakages and pouch should not contact with any metal if if after packing if it is touches the small pin it will collapse and there should be no leakages of pouches and gas should be perfect in that what we got either co2 and all and um, for this vacuum we we used to we have to use one uh, compressor uh, small compressor around 0.7 kg 0.2 kilowatt compressor that compressor has to dent sometimes what will happen in packing section there should be not much technical person will not there mostly the supervisors or the who is focusing on production team only will be there they don't know how to drain that what will happen while they are using compressor the air and uh, it will it will get uh, water content and it will mix to the product so without knowing that then people will not even think that this is happening there no one no no until we open the drain so for that also we have to continuously monitor that and uh, room temperature maintenance uh, means uh, in packing section mostly people will use ac and air conditions and also you have to do that otherwise moisture will increase and drop there is so many fluctuations will be there if you don't use air conditions and uh, safety and hygiene precautions as normal as as as, as per every sections it is quite well yes sir it's it's is clear for that and utility 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 for every industry not even not even cash for every industry this utility will play major role based on that only uh, factories will run if anything damage many sections will be under down like compressor compressors uh, compressors uh, i think uh, compressors will play crucial role in cash flow industry because based on that only we'll get feasibility and sorting machines so many things are there based on compressor for that compressor we have to there is two points in compressor compressor and it's having a tank a receiver tank compressor will run and it will fill the tank and it will get go to the idle if you start compressor it will start it will give air and it will get down this is the process but if we don't know the compression uh, sorry compressed air consumption for example if you are using 50 kilowatt compressor the consumption is we are using around 20 meter cube per minute so consum- consumption is mismatching so that what will happen compressor will be on load continuously compressor should not load up continuously it will run 10 minutes it will take 5 minutes it means that it will be in idle not means compressor stopping it, it is an automatic system so it will stop again it will take load these these things we have to maintain continuously if it is 
the the rest time is less it means that compressor is having huge load on it so it causes to damage the uh, screws in the compressor and the bearings also will get damaged because of continuous run so and uh, 100% 100% we have to do service at required hours every normally every 2000 hours we used to do service so that 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 schedule has to be done for that better we can take amc annual maintenance contracts with the dealers so it will save it will save money as well as we don't need to worry about compressors so that this uh, third party vendor will take care of it so it will will be in safe zone for boiler boilers uh, boiler there is two things input water and output steam if we don't give input water the steam will be and steam steam nozzles prs and steam lines all get corrosion all everything will get damaged all the gaskets will damage the, the water the purified water we have to give input for that we have to check ph and density and uh, these all the things and uh, what we call uh, distilled distilled content of water inside that we have to check continuously then only uh, what will happen uh, boiler will get good water without dust so that it will give good steam and firing of the firing of the boiler and the smoke and the chimneys what uh, this dust collectors chimney i end user draft fan these all the things we have to maintain continuously most of the things as per my xp and experience as a maintenance guy i used to spend much time with boiler compressors generators only so remaining things i used to keep people and they will control that they will inform so this is major thing because if a boiler shuts factory shuts down compressor stops factory stops so this is major things for that etp and stp efic efficient treatment plants efficient most this is uh, required by the government if, if government required that we have to keep that mostly we 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 have to use it is the used water it can rec recycle not for utility for uh, for plantation and all we have to keep that uh, etp and stp plant so that water cannot waste means uh, used water mean uh, for example toilet water or floor cleaning and all these will go to there and it will circulate there if we go this is a separate plant if we go deeply inside that this is the scene is too different so toilets also will come under utility we have to maintain it hygiene workshop workshop this uh, most of the things i never seen a separate workshop in, in any factory that workshop will be in an every section if if it, if it in shelling there is workshop if it is peeling there is no it is not like that if uh, for for this audit has up on brc we have to keep a certain place that which is workshop and everything has to be done there an engineering store i think everyone will maintain for that all the space has to be in under control that what is the consumption what is the in uh, what is the uh, uh, sorry goods received and goods out so these all things we have to continuous monitor then only factory sorry management will be happy with that otherwise we are taking and we are consuming those so there is nothing like that and there should be some targets for maintenance space uh, for me there is a target that i should consume some millions only to buy spares if it is go beyond that i have to give explanation so engineering store is 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 just like a uh, what we call it's like a father for all the machinery so that is different um, so for clips if uh, if you are if you are using this material moment if you required we have to use for clip for that also we have to do continuous service and all we have to maintain that all material moment and bins uh, material moment bins these bins uh, like we said after cooking we have uh, the way we are collecting material the, the way we are moving it should be in proper way the, it should not damage the machinery it should not get uh, damaged so these all the things we have to maintain with that and trucks is depend some we don't need to discuss about it trucks will be outsourcing things yes sir okay bala one thing can you elaborate yeah. a little bit on the workshop usually people feel workshop is just a very small place and ah, i saw your workshop yeah. is quite big and uh, yeah, and yeah. the team so can you explain a little bit how big your team is when you're processing 15000 metric ton a year or 10000 metric ton a year and so that people understand yeah. oh when we say workshop is not just a corner it is yeah. well thought well designed space we have i think uh, we have fight with management to be required my uh, workshop I mean, there is so many discussions happen i think in front of you so uh, workshop say so let me exp- let me tell you what what we have right now we have a workshop which is around uh, 14 by 14 meters which is quite big there what we used to do every machine for example in shelling we if a machine every day we used to do a 
proper CLIT for machine. So we will remove that machine from that line and we'll take it to the workshop bay. There we'll do all the things. Either we're cleaning with all the liquids and oil. Either we, we, we sometimes some things are there to use with the diesel. So we cannot take diesel to the floor. So we do all the things here. For example, some some welding things. For example, some things will broken. Sometimes we used to weld in the uh, uh, line itself in the section itself. At that time, we have to take permissions of the section in charge, then we have to work on it. So that is different thing. For example, if we don't need to do that, we have to bring that material to workshop, then we have to work it. Like that, some heavy, heavy works is there. Sometimes some bearings will stuck up. We have to hit on the floor. So we cannot do that in the section. That we have to bring it out and we have to do in the, there is so much hard work and rough work will happen in the uh, workshop. So that, that, that there is a team for, for, let me tell you my experience. There is a team who will attend breakdowns, who will do cleat, and who will do the section operators. This is the team we have separated there. These people, some people will be in workshop only. They do these hard works and they continuously monitor the machineries. Anything is going to get damaged. They will bring it to the workshop and they'll work on it. So workshop will be a rest place for all the machineries. When it is comes to workshop, it, will, it has to go to the same section with perfect and uh, <laughs> like, a, like what he says, say hospital. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which is good. And how big yeah. your team is? Like how many how many team players you have all in together? Maintenance in day shift uh, around uh, eleven plus eleven, sir. Mission operators. So twenty two people work for the maintenance team. Maintenance, some people do yes. only cleat. Some people do only you know um, Weld, welding so and all for maintenance. And other people will do observations. Great, yes, sir. Yeah. One thing is electrical. Yes, yeah, so this, this, this. Uh, in in when I came uh, in Africa, I learned many things on these electrical and mechanical things because based on availability of spares. When we are dis discussing with the manufacturer, when we are discussing with the vendor, so there is so much of knowledge I have gained personally by doing this a job in Africa. So uh, for electrical, we have to. The under, first, whenever we are starting a factory, the load control should be in our hand. We have to know the load, how many kilowatts of the factory we have to know that. Then only we can plan for the income or power. So how about, uh, we, can, we have to think on power sources. Uh, in Nigeria, mostly we used to uh, deal with only generators. Uh, many times I, I got tears because of the generators and, and the power load issues. So uh, I'm involved in electrical things that uh, I started uh, calculating load after when we facing issues with generator. Okay, the load is 100 kilowatt, so the generator can give only 60 kilowatt. So it is insufficient. So we have to stop some machines. So if we don't know the load exactly, we cannot balance a factory. Especially in Nigeria, it is very tough. We have to plan that. Okay, this is the load, and this is our income or power capacity. So that we have to plan that. Okay, if it is not uh, enough. So that management is not able to get bigger one. So what we have to do? So, okay, this section you can run, this section you cannot run until if you don't want. For that, we have to apply power consumption. So if you are not using that machine, we have to stop. Then only we can run in other sections. Then So there is so many tricky things. That, as I told you, I have to spend much time with generators and boiler and compressors only. So what will happen to understand well to, to 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 perform well with the in the factory we have to know the load list how many kilowatt of the machine how many kilowatt of each motor how many kilowatt of the bucket elevator what we are taking for entire uh, how many what bulbs are there in factory Every, how many acs are in on some uh, uh, personally i used to go to offices and, and i used to stop the lines so uh, that is load list we have to have and, and power consumption power consumption kilowatt hour how many units we are consuming per shift Based on that, we have to make power consumption. How many units we are consuming? For example, from the generators or from wherever, we are we are taking around 3,000 units per day. Or let's take 3,000 units per shift if you are taking that. Based on that, we have to make power consumption. If consumption is high, to process one ton, it should be around 190 to 200 and, uh, 210 kilowatt hour per ton only. If it is go beyond that, our power consumption is in worse stage. If it is less, that means we are not running factory. That also is a factor per one ton we have to make, keep it in 190 to 230 kilowatt hour these are the units it should be in that range sometimes let me tell you one my experience it was 420 units per ton we, we consumed at a certain age that where we not produce we just used to clear the factory only so uh, this is very big thing that we have to uh, control power consumption 
electrical hazards these short circuit these things will happen when we are not aware of the load and incomer breakers and the, if we don't know about this the short circuit will happen for example there there is one thing oilr overload relays if a motor is running there will be one uh, to keep motor safe there will be one uh, overload relay it will tip the uh, tip the breaker if motor is taking overload if it is not functioning either breaker will damage or motor will damage for that we have to continuously keep a proper required things for example 20 kilowatt means we have to keep a 20 kilowatt breaker only then only it can sustain how many amps breaker we can use and 30 amps okay 30 amp breaker only will if it is if you are not following those standards it will get burn hazards will happen it is it is it will horrible things will happen tpm tpm total uh, productive maintenance means <clears throat> for example in a day in a day uh, let's take a 12 hours in a shift uh, 10 hours let's take 10 hours in a 10 hours our breakdown on the one for example in a shelling machine one it has to run 10 hours because of breakdowns it run only 9 hours that one hour that one hour one hour one hour one hour in a month how many hours it is those hours divided by total hours those percentage those percentage total productive maintenance is depends on that how much time we are taking to do the repair and uh, the time how many times it is repeating for that we have to do many charts for that so there is so many analysis analyzing things are there like i mentioned next one is breakdown analysis so that is a tpm tpm has to be under control as a maintenance head we have to be under uh, we have to be sure that how much time we are taking and what is our tpm in a month how many hours we kept the machine under down those things we have to record and uh, let's come to generator maintenance and service this 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 is a very horrible thing if we don't do that then factory will be under down uh, in any time we, we cannot say that sometimes load will fluctuate it will stop at any time and um, mean time to repair mttr this this as i said you how much time we are taking to repair for example to to change a bearing to change a motor to recoil a motor how much time we are taking how much time for example if you take uh, 30 minutes why 30 minutes in the 30 minutes sometimes what will happen we want we want, i want to change a motor here for that what will happen because of improper toolbox training the the operator will will not will don't have some proper tools so for the tools he will go to the his store again and he will come no 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 not this go back. so these, these these are the things has to we will work on mttr mean time to repair if we, if we, if we, these things will happen when we are clearly aware of the machine then only we can go okay these are the things we require to repair that let's come with the sufficient thing then do that then close the issue these, these, these things will happen safety trainings and elect, electricians and mechanics this has to be done every day if it is possible every day we have to have a discuss with the team that what is the highlights of that and what is the things and happen and what are the precautions you have to take while working these things we have to do that steam and air consumption this consumption as i said you uh, from the compressor we have to know the meter cube per minute consumption for, from the steam where how many bars we are how many i mean i mean how many units we are consuming that we have to note down safety precautions as everyone knows that we, if we, we have to take care of ourselves that is fine so i think it's done sir it's been uh, around uh, two hours have taken any question well, and answers i think I, uh, Thank you very much, Bala. I think uh, what a time you took. It was required and it was necessary. It was very, very, I think, uh, interesting. Uh, yes. I think uh, let's open the stage now for uh, for the Q and A session. I would like yes, to sir. invite uh, participants to just put raise your hand or put your question. I try to respond questions during uh, Q and A session, like before when I was receiving questions, I replied many of them. Some of them are not yet replied. Uh, this is the time now to ask those questions. Yes, sir. So uh, anyone who want to raise their hands, please. Yes, sir. So we have quite a number of hands raised up. We have uh, <laughs> Jejida Galaxy A20 and then Zinor Kumar. There are about three hands raised up. So we are going to unmute Galaxy right now. So Galaxy A20 is it's ready to ask the question. Galazi A20, please, if you can hear me. Yeah. Please go ahead and ask your question.
while we wait for Galaxy A20 to get ready, maybe Jedida can add. Okay, Galaxy A20. That's fine. He's mute now. Yeah. So let's 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 unmute uh, Jedida to ask the question. Yes. Sir. Okay. Well, you know, Kumar, can you can you hear me? Would you like to ask your question now? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, sir. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Sir, Sikti, sir, it's a great uh, opportunity for me to participate in this. And Balakrishna, sir, is a very good presentation. I like to that. Thank you. And uh, already I have posted two questions in which one Shakti, sir, has already given a reply to me regarding the organic okay. uh, certification for, uh, because we are working on organic certification right now. So that already Shakti sir has confirmed me that pasteurization process will not affect my certification process because we are also working on the pasteurization machines to install in our factory areas. So just ask them so whether it can affect my organic certification process because I see some complications in that because you already mentioned there is an infrared radiation which is uh, which is directly on the cashew kernels. So uh, that I just got a doubt on that. So just uh, Shakti sir has told me that uh, is already uh, certified with uh, organic uh, certification also. And my second question is uh, uh, regarding the peeling machines, because uh, I find small light uh, difficulties in there because at the air peeler session and uh, batch peeler. See, there is a two machines now, right now, overall we are using. One is air peeler machines and one is the batch peeler machines. So when I compared with the both of them, uh, I see a light uh, differences, which is because when you start with the ordinary peeling machine, which compress of uh, your drum, shaft, and a pillar, so the pieces percentage is less when you compare with the batch peeler. Is yes. because of the nozzle differences, because batch peeler is completely works on nozzle, a pillar, yes. everything. So what would be the, uh, because we are slightly doing on R&D on a lot of batch fillers and uh, nozzle size and this thing. So what is your recommendation? What is the best, best nozzle width, the whole dia of uh, the batch filler? Batch filler, uh, what we are using right now? What you are using right now? What is the so nozzle size? Using, I have three uh, normal uh, peeling machines, air peeling machines, and one batch filler. Okay. So uh, I just yes 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 go on please. No 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 no. Uh, can you tell me what is the nozzle size of your batch peeling machine, and what is the pressure you are using with batch pillar? So no, presently my pressure is uh, four bar. The input pressure is four bar. So four bar I have regulated that, and uh, the nozzle. What is the capacity capacity of that capacity of the uh, batch pillar? One fifty kg per hour. One fifty kg per hour and uh, four bar pressure. So how many nozzles are there? Nozzle width. How many nozzles? There are two uh, cylinders. So each okay. cylinder has uh, twelve nozzles. Hmm. Then uh, so my nozzle width is two point two. Okay. Two point two mm. So two point two mm little high, na sir, because. You are using less pressure. If you use more pressure, so you can try one thing. Give six bar pressure with the same nozzle size. Let's check the result. Okay. You, so you got but, me. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, if I, you reduce, if for for same four bar pressure, make it to uh, make it to around one point five to one point six, then you will get more uh, uh, pressure. You know, if you if you reduce the size of nozzle, will get more pressure. And if you increase that, there should be less pressure. And however, you are using four bra four bar. Even air peeler itself, we are we required 5.5 to 6 bar. We are using 4 bar means even at that area you are getting more broken means better you should be with uh, this uh, drum and shaft peel. Okay, okay. The problem is yeah, that's what exactly I am facing. The problem is no, not a not no, no, it is no, no. I, I understand you, sir. I, under, I understand you. The, I understand you. The simple trick is that the pressure is 4 bar and the nozzle is little high. So what will happen? Pressure will be dropped. And if yes. nozzle size is small, if you if you keep uh, same four bar pressure, you are, you can get more pressure. But if you don't need to change any nozzle there, keep two point two, but increase the in incomer pressure. So what will happen? Okay. You will get more pressure in that. 
okay this is what okay, i want sir, to say thank you very much thank you very much yeah. for your such thank thank you thank, thank you so much thank you sir any other question that's just the only hand up at the moment but i see there are some questions in the chat there are two okay. new questions in the chat i don't know if you've taken those already yes yes question two please can we get um and uh, the presentation i see your hand is up please would you like to ask a question okay he's okay uh, let me let me ask you a question uh, bala i think mr Fine. john uh, he want to know about uh, please can you share your experience regarding the peeling machine settings drum rocket speed angle air pressure according to the kernel grade size and and moisture yes uh, but, uh, drum and shaft speeds like i said sir it is uh, by seeing the material we can we have to adjust the speed and uh, speed of the drum and shaft what will happen if we, we like a normal scenario shaft speed should be double than drum speed this is the normal principle that but this is not exactly what we have to do but uh, based on this is the normal thing yes i'll call so uh, that is a ma major thing uh, shaft speed always should be high that is number one and angle sir in uh, if if i can uh, design i can explain you very well but uh, the drum inside uh, sorry while the material coming in and while material coming out the shaft should be inclined means if we keep uh, 30 degrees positive that side 30 degrees negative this side then only the sh the shaft will be inclined so that all the material can uh, contact with the springs this is normal thing so and else moisture my as per coming to moisture sir if we increase moisture around 5.2 so much lumps and so much what we call sticky particles will accumulate in the drum that also we have to clean continuously even that shaft also we every monthly we have to remove the shaft out we have to remove so many threads and so many particles so many dust particles will accumulate inside that we have to clean that by cast iron or whatever we have to clean that uh, clearly then only it will perform well and what will happen some springs will break until sometimes what will happen 6 7 months people will not even open the shop shop what will happen there should there will be no springs so kernel will come and go like that so uh, these these parameters we have to check continuously this is Mo moisture 4.2 we have to start sir 4.2 we have to start if it is uh, 4 also there is so many chances to get broken yes okay. sir okay uh, there is another question uh, is from um okay there is no name uh, does the maintenance team also maintain the fire fighting system and how yes sir yes not only maintenance everyone in every section in charge has to do that every section every operator has has to operate that uh, how to use that we have to give proper trainings to them then only everyone will do it. That, that safety training is for all the people in the factory every monthly we used to do that there is some mock drills we used to do some certain drills without informing we we will we'll inform that there is a fire run out everyone so that people some people there there is a team separate we, i maintain some some team that team a team b team c those people will come when they hear those words they will come back remaining they will send all the people to at a assembling place these these are so many things to discuss about it but uh, yes everyone is responsible for that okay there is another question uh, how to update farmers post harvest moisture treatment knowledge for raw cashew after harvest in africa because it is very important for factories to process cashews i, I don't that, know yeah, that that, that um, you are you are you are most experienced in that sir <laughs> I, i cannot do that <laughs> i think uh, the african farmers are, are are learning more and more they are drying uh, the product uh, but i think looking at the prices looking at the practices on on, on the ground uh, always just keep putting farmers at fault is not a good thing i think uh, i think it's uh, the whole system will then come together is going to address this issue this is not just issue at farm gate it's a, it's, a, it's much bigger than that okay i think there is no more other question remaining that's cool there is one uh, fine, sir. Sir. can you say it pardon there's, there's one last question from galazi yes 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 so there is another question what will best combination of if drying time and temperature for different origin caches that is different on different origins difference from the origins na sir yeah i think uh, 
I, I can I think this is there's no thumb rule in cash flows. We cannot say is this origin this time this because there's a lot of variables which we have to consider when we talk about setting up the temperature. So very first thing, which equipment you are using, then what origin you are using. So you have some estimations, and then you do some trials, and then you get the ideal temperature and drying time for yourself. So I don't think so. They, they, this is not Boeing A A thirty or no A three eighty. Where everything is very precious, you know, like precise. Cash Hi, sir. Can you hear like me? That. Yeah. Yeah, I, we can hear you, Babala. We can hear you. Okay, there are some new new questions. So this this question, Babala, can you hear me? Hello, Babala, are you there? Yeah, I'm sorry, sir. My line was disconnected. I'm okay, that's fine. That. That's fine. Now you're back. Yeah. So there's another yeah. question from Edwar uh, Asogba. Merci a Bala. Je voudrais savoir si l'équipe de maintenance est intégrée au personnel au recruté. Okay. The question is that uh, to you, Bala, that uh, he would like to know whether the, the maintenance team is also integrated uh, as in, in, in as personnel in the in, in your recru recruitment, you know, uh, the agency or recruitment style. Who recruit them? No, uh, mostly we used to deal with some contractors, sir. The, we used to request them, and we used to uh, some for the for some graduates. We used to go to some universities. There is some team recruitment team, so they will arrange for interview. Then we'll discuss when we'll have some interview and all. Then we can select the people. It is quite tough to get perfect people in Africa, but we can get the best the best people here. And then then you train them definitely. Yeah, we have to train hundred percent. Yes, of course. That is for graduates. For uh, remaining technicians and all, it, it's with the manpower contractors. We used to call regular people that people wherever they are working, we will grab them and we have to train them. That's it. So there is another question: Are you fabricating some spare parts in your factory? Yes, sir. Not exactly. Something like uh, direction bars, some pusher bars. We used to fabricate for shelling. And uh, some, not much, sir. Mostly we have a workshop uh, nearby our factory, so we used to get some things from them. So we we give design to them so that they will do better perform. Oh, you you're doing it in because uh, in, it. yeah, in, in, instead of wasting time for around one two months, so better we can try here. So yes. that's a good good advice. I think people can can come up with this. Yeah, yeah, that there's we have to do, sir. That uh, yes. Yeah, there's another yes. question from Theodore. How do you measure the moisture percentage of RCN before processing? What equipment do you need? Uh, there is a Ronald moisture meter, sir. There, no, sir. I think you are aware, aware of it much. Yes, yeah. moisture meters are there. They are which sure. uh, what we are using is from Vietnam, which quite well. So, so you can suggest anything, sir. So, Mr. Mr. Theodore, there are variety of moisture meters, uh, ranging from you know, five hundred dollars to three or four thousand dollars. Uh, of worth, I think uh, depends. Uh, you see where you are, where what what is available, and uh, I think uh, majority of majority of the African processor are using, I think two or three different types. Uh, I can send you the brands, uh, and then you can you can just approach the suppliers and get some, and then can come up with three or four different uh, options. Uh, right now, I I don't remember the the brand right now. Uh, another question is how to calculate weight loss of cashew after drying. As water or moisture loss happening in drying, that uh, we have to dry. We have to scale every bag as batch wise before uh, drying. After drying, we have to put in bag bag eighty kg standard. Then, so uh, there is standard weights, no, sir. Which is, yeah, it's uh, very simple thing. Yeah, thing. when we are putting the can yeah. nuts into oven, we weigh them, and when we taking them out, we weigh them again. So that's how yeah. we do it. And when we say uh, during the oven, we just measure the uh, moisture content with the with the equipment, and we know what it is yeah. losing. Okay, there's another question: How to calculate? Uh, uh, no, no. Okay, is there any formula to calculate drying time based on moisture and property of cash flow before dry? Uh, I think this all uh, coming from Galaxy A20. I didn't understood this. 
I don't understand, sir. That. I'm sorry, Galaxy A20. I, I didn't get your answer question. If you want to speak yourself, you can raise your hand. But that's a mobile number, Galaxy A20. It's not easy. Yes, I think that's what is what is what is there actually. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we are done with the questions now. Uh, yes, sir. Is there any question? Okay. The, 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 I mean, yeah. Fine. How do you calculate your Dene, cost in relative to maintenance? I think there is another question. Okay, yeah. Dene would like to speak. Dene, you can, can you speak now? Can you hear me? Dene, please, there is a pop up that will show on your screen. Can we accept it and you'll be able to speak? Vous m'entendez? Je vais parler en français. Oui, vous pouvez parler en français. Alors, ok, j'ai une question à Bala par rapport à, au calcul du TRG en TPR. Can you translate, oh. sir? He would like to know, uh, ask eh, a question eh. on the TPR, how to calculate TPR. OEEE. Eh, eh, eh. Overall equipment. I didn't understand the question. Uh, TPM? Yeah, in TPM, there is one uh, parameter, the overall uh, to calculate, how to calculate availability and uh, performance and quality. I think TPM, yeah, total productive uh, maintenance. Down, down, yes, downtime divided by total running hours of the machine. Times but 100 now is the percentage. I want to know yes. if you want to consider the, the quality, what parameter? Okay. For, the uncut or uh, unscoop? Okay. I don't know. See, a percent, no, no. Let, let me tell you that. Let me tell you that. Yeah. While we are, while cutting machine is running, not I'm, I'm not talking about line. Every cut, if you take each and every machine, we have to collect the sample of. 60 seconds. That 60 seconds sample we have to collect. There we have to separate all the things. Holes, pieces, unscooped holes, unscooped pieces, shell, uncut. That we have to make a percentage. Total quantity divided, uh, sorry, quantity divided by total quantity. That is the percentage. It should not be more than 10% of uncut. This is a normal uh, percentage. What we used to take uh, quality test for uh, shelling machine. Uncut and all. Okay. You, okay, you, got, is, you, you got me right. You got, you got me right. I'll, I'll explain. Yeah, I got you. But now my question is about uh, that uh, uh, overall uh, equipment, that uh, indicator of TRG. Indicator of TRG? Of, of uh, TPM. 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 TPM total productive that, maintenance that, that that is that is what I'm, I'm I'm telling you in a day for example if downtime is one hour divided by total how many hours we have run times yeah. uh, 100 is equal to it will come for example one hour time 10 hour means 10 percent of our downtime it should be two percent only it should not more than two percent okay. we have to calic we should not take as a day TPM will be on monthly wise in a month, how many hours downtime, how many total running hours, uh, downtimes divided by total run hours times 100. That is a percentage. It should not be 2% or more. If you are, it is around 6% okay. or 7%, it means that factory, means entire machinery is at, at, at well, last there's another, uh, there's another question from Yao. Thank you. Um, yeah, yes, how do you calculate you, you. your cost related to maintenance? Cost relative to maintenance, there is some budget uh, which uh, will be given by the ma management. They, they will, uh, for that, we have to give the uh, proposal. These are the things we are going to change. These are the things we are going to buy. And these are the things locally we are going to repair cost and so on. That we have to keep an assumption. Then we have to submit to the man management. Then they will approve the some amount. In that amount only, we have to manage. For example, let me tell you 10 million Naira. Mostly I used to get the budget. In that only, we have to I have to buy all the 
things including uh, even some bearings motor recoiling motor spares and so many so many things everything has to be included in that so it should not be and that these it should not fix it by the management we have to propose the man management that this is the things i have planned in the month as a maintenance so the management will approve this is the process and there should be no exactly fixed uh, point is not there anywhere i so think it's clear sir one more one more i think this galaxy a20 he he raised now his hand. back uh, can blessing can you yes yes shall i unmute Sorry? Yeah. Can you unmute Galaxy A20? Okay. Galaxy A20, please, there's a pop-up that shows on your screen. Can you accept? If not, you won't be unmuted. Okay. I think he was there in last summit also, sir. Yeah, Galaxy I think he's there. Yeah. Okay, he's there. He's on now. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Oga. Hi. Hello, Mr. Bala. Hi. Uh, you remember me? I am from Karnataka. Uh, we we had Tata discussion for this PR station. Hello. Yeah, Mr. Samir, Samir with you. right? Yeah, yeah, Samir Is with you. Mr. Yes. Samir. Ah, hi, yeah. sir. How are you? Yeah, 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 yeah. We 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 already uh, we already taken quotation from this fourth marshal for PRS. Uh, we are going to install this PRS by next week. That's cool, sir. That's great. Seriously, I think uh, yeah, you yeah. hear the I already place order. Of the yeah, that's we give an order sir. for that's PRS. Even uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I I I couldn't no, be able no, to no. help you because I was in total troubles. <laughs> I'm, I'm running behind no, the troubles. <laughs> yeah, I place order. Can you ask the question? Yeah, uh, my question uh, for this uh, dryer, you know, dryer. How to calculate? How to exactly come to know the drying time? based on origin like tanzania benin or togo you know uh see sir forget about location. origin let's let, yeah. no no sir forget about origin just do simple tricks first make yeah. sure note down input moisture by by doing yeah. powder moisture by by what we call moisture analyzer do it with moisture analyzer not with kernel okay. moisture that okay you will get around after shelling it will be 8 to 10% only after that you put in dryer take it a batch as a trial batch in that Every okay. one hour, you note down. After one hour, take some sample, note it. After one hour, take some sample. Each every hour, you do it by manual peeling. You peel it with your hands. Okay, that is okay. one process. Okay. Whenever you are peeling is good, do peeling that time. And after seven or eight hours, you will get good results. I'm sure we you are using electrical dryers. That is quite well. Right, right. And after that, yeah. to fix your peelability, to fix your peeling results, take exactly. one kg of uh 1 kg of uh, borma kernel 1 kg of kernel keep it a place correct do correct. it with your uh, manually uh, pe uh, peel it and in that take percentage hand peeling, hand how peeling. much fully peel yeah do it with hand peel not with knife with hands only so in that how yeah. much ww is there how much unpeeled is there how much broken is there then make a percentages and fix a target do it like four or five times you will try to understand that what is your uh, control point and checkpoint then your okay. your issue will be 100% solved okay okay you, thank I you i hope you got me sir yeah one one more yes. one more question in in my electrical dryer there is two one 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 pressure inlet one exhaust inlet uh, what is the what is the major role of that uh, inlet pressure and exhaust uh, exhaust will be sir what will happen if you exhaust, more right? heat inside in a closed yeah, no not moisture exhaust sir uh, if you keep more heat inside a closed chamber what will happen the heat has to exhaust so for that they will yeah, they'll sure. keep they'll keep two holes two hole normal holes this this is happen with uh, steam dryers also there is some holes for that also exhaust one that is what will happen yeah as you said moisture can also evaporate from that so it will use for both because to, uh, huge heat cannot accumulate there that is the reason for exhaust that it is we it, need is, it to is a mandatory keep it open yeah yeah we have to keep it open sir to but keep it that fresh air and exhaust for 8 hours better no sir if for, for, for first to 4 hours you have to close the rest of the 4 hours you have to keep open it will save your product ah uh -huh. we can save okay. the we can save the electricity yes I, yeah. are you done with the questions or yeah, you thank you thank you okay thanks thank there is another question from uh, mr patrick from benin Okay. He would like to know whether can they put uh, in place a system uh, which is uh, which is just a management system for 
which is directed through a computer in in deshelling yeah. section so yeah, uh, like this this is in, in french i i just so what i understood is this means that uh, sir he, he is asking for material uh, like sap he is asking yes so he is asking so can we put a system in system. place which is gmao which is gestion de la maintenance assiste par ordinateur that how how we can use the you know a computerized maintenance system uh, oh, no. in in the shelling uh, section this casho machinery not reach till that level i'm sure sir i can say that clearly yeah. but it may reach because because uh, these included with all plc programming program logical controls uh, for that it is not possible right now because we have to clean the machine or maintain machine with hands only there is okay. because uh, like if you say that uh, ir can do its own own maintenance for plc and all they, but ir is different and shelling machine is different so both are different different section so it is not possible right now okay there's another from mr anil balakrishnan sir if no prs in the system line the solenoid wall will get spoiled yes it will spoil it's only from it will spoil it, okay. it it will not it will not spoil immediately but definitely it will spoil as soon as possible within uh, within 2 3 days it will get spoiled because solenoid wall is con uh, connected of there is a core and a rubber cap if if it get more steam continuously with more pressure it will get damaged 100% so there is another question from jadida dambi that uh, she is asking or he is asking how we are going to do this training program what we are talking here uh, offline you know hands on training program i i think uh, uh, jadida uh, it depends on many factors i think uh, aca you approach aca if there is a need such kind of need ac can organize this type of training programs where uh, experts can come come and train you a uh, very hands on approach and there are some other projects uh, which is financed by different uh, uh, like uh, cbi also have a project where some experts are there who can also come and help you okay i think uh, that's it we took quite a lot of questions i think it's uh, getting quite late we only took more than 2 yeah. <laughs> hours and 15 minutes Uh, i would like to say thanks yes, to all sir. participants uh, for their valuable time and for their you know uh, enthusiasm asking so many questions uh, very participative and uh, uh, thanks to aca to keep continuing doing such uh, knowledge sharing platforms uh, that's very needed for african processing and at last bala thank you very much i i yeah, i, I you, owe sir. you i think you did a great job uh, and you help a lot of people and i'm we we are we are very sure uh, soon we will come back to you uh, to help us or help other people who are actually putting their investment in cash processing in africa uh, you are truly an asset <laughs> for african processing thank you very much yes, sir especially i'm thankful to you sir because uh, you give a second chance to me when when was last session i'm just reading and going i was confused that uh, you said 20 minutes and i'm not able even the slides are many so but uh, thank you so much sir you give a chance to uh, perform in front of a big platform like aca i'm very thankful to you sir thank you so thank much thank you thank you okay yes, here sir. we go you, uh, anything else blessing you would like to say yeah that would be all for now thank you very much to you shanti for moderating such a session thank you to the maintenance guru bala for sharing your knowledge thank with you. us we are grateful for your time and for the knowledge Um please if you have questions or comments you may write to Shakti or Bala they are happy to further have details or discussions with you we would also like to announce that the global market encounter with Jim Fitzpatrick comes back again on Wednesday so Wednesday 9 o'clock we resume our global market encounter with Jim Fitzpatrick please mark your calendars and join us again on Wednesday If you have topics that you would like us to have a uh, spin-off or special sections like today, please write to us at aca@africancashualliance at and we'll bring in experts that would dive into your desired topics. If you would like to advertise during any of our sessions, please write to us also at aca@africancashualliance.co. At please don't forget Wednesday 28th of October 9:00 we are meeting for the global Market encounter. 
We will leave the next 15 to 20 minutes for networking. Tell us who you are in the chat section. Get to know somebody. Get to know Shakti. Get to know Bala. And let's network in the next 15 minutes. Thank you very much all for joining yeah. us. We'll see you on Wednesday, 9 o'clock GMT. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. you so much. Blessing. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir.